Welcome to the map Forts of Eisen in BFME 1 on the patch 2.2 once again for a video commentary between good and evil. We have the blue Rohan player Fishy versus the green Isengard player Pistolero. Good against evil, Rohan against Isengard on the map Forts of Eisen. You know, I think it's a pretty good matchup, pretty good map. Let's get it started. So Uruk Pit Furnace opening, that's the meta opening for Aizen in every matchup, even against Mordor. So that's something you can always copy. You op open with Uruk Pit Furnace and get Uruks, 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 Uruks. The plan is to get the Uruk Pit to level 2. Against Mordor you will need Berserker. Against Rohan or Gondor you will need the Pikeman. And for that reason, in every matchup you will need the Uruk Pit to hit level 2. And to achieve that you need to recruit a thousand resource Worthy army so you can go for five uruks you can go for two crossbowmen and one uruk all you need to do is invest a thousand to get the uruk pit to level two so the hobbit was coming from the bottom now the peasants are following up and he will get one more wave of peasants i'm assuming now he has one more peasant only ah he was able to sneak through but the uruks will be of course able to win the one way one situation without any problems and the Mary was able to make it to this location and his goal is to kill some of the workers. And each of them costs $25, you know? That's super valuable to kill the workers because they need to be replaced. The Uruks with Warchant. They are bringing the hobbits to Isengard. Guard, guard. <laughs> okay, the peasant, I mean, not the peasant, the hobbit was not able to make it alive, of course. There are too many units. And also, the peasants here should not take a long fight because they are war chanted, the Uruks. And now the more Uruks will come. So, the early game of Isen looks pretty decent. He was able to keep every settlement protected because the Rohan player, I'm not going for a lot of peasant spam, he want to go for a steeple to get the Rohirrim up on the field as soon as possible and the first Rohirrim warrior will make it now to the field master the Rohirrim they are look they are running so guys i'm telling you when we cast replays the speed of the game is not the same like the speed of the game when you play the game you know here in the replay everything is looking so crazy smooth and fast you know what i'm saying but in actual game it's not like that bro it's not like that so the creep was taken by isengard that's pretty good but the settlement will be captured by rohan and he has not a super hot looking beast but you know having a uruk pit level 2 and three furnaces in the base against rohan as Isen on a map like this is pretty good you know so more Rohirrim will be making it to the field and the plan is to creep as many layers as you potentially can to get the uh, Alvin summon unlocked from Rispear work. That's the plan. Aizen was also creeping this one at the bottom side. So two creeps for Aizen so far. That's going to be the first creep for Rohan at the top left side. But creeping other creeps without Pikeman, it's going to be quite difficult for Aizen. Let's see if he can pull this off. Because the Pikeman will be countered by the peasants big time. So at early game you need the combination of the Pikeman and Berserker to counter this. And later on you will need of course some Shark Co-Action or some Ward Pit. But the creep was uncontested, it's gonna be the second creep for Rohan at the middle. It looks like this creep will be pretty much presented and gifted to Aizen. So it's gonna be three creeps in total for Aizen on a map like this. It's pretty good actually. So 3-3, three, three, I think that's quite decent. As Gondor, it's kind of difficult to get 3 creeps against Aizen on a map like this. Because Gondor is not that great counter to um, to Pikeman as, as Rohan does. You need to build the barracks and that's something Rohan doesn't need to do. You can always you know, pump out some peasants from the farms. Which of course is way easier because you will have farms anyway as they are your resource buildings. While Gondor has to build a dedicated structure for this, which means weaker eco, you know? So the creep was uncontested, of course. So three creeps, which will get him actually to a decent amount of um, experience points. Two and a half power points collected. Pretty, pretty good. Good looking base for Aizen. Full base, actually. Going for the warp pit next to counter the peasant spam. And also full base for I uh, Rohan. 
He's going for the armory, going for the heavy armor first. More laborers, eh? Put them to work. Put them to work. Towering up. And more peasants. But now it's different, sorry, bro. Now my wargs are hungry situation. Okay, so in the middle we have heavy armor on the on the Rohirrim warriors. They are still trying to kill some of the peasants, but again, the wargs are able to trample them over and over again. Is there any problems? And I would love to see Sharku in this matchup. I think Sharku adds so much to the table. Let's go now. This farm is going to go down. What you can always do with Rohan is you can just pump out more and more peasants. They cost $125. You know, it's not like they are super expensive. Again, all of that from a structure that also gives you money. Oh, the first peace rush. Hold on a second. Did he lose? No, no, no. Okay. Palantir, maybe? Yeah. Oh, he's on the hunt, boys. But they have no upgrades, the Vorks, so you can always turn and fight them. It's not like you can kill him, you know. They can always turn and fight. They have uh, heavy armor plus forge blades. They are way stronger than you are. Ooh, be careful. Oh my god. And that's a bad Alvin summon, bro. Like, you know, you need to always think a step ahead. When you wait with the Alvin summon for another push with, like, healthy Rohirrim, not, like, damaged Rohirrim, and you potentially go for Theorin 2, your push might be much better. Now you will kill some pikemen, but there won't be any follow-up. You have no threat, and you have no... You are not creating any danger for this castle, you know? Sharku has been recruited for Isengard. And the farm here is going to be taken down. down. My Vorks are hungry. Sharku, pretty good actually, you know? I like him. He's kind of... Look, Vorks are good at the, at the early mid game, but they follow off late game big time. And Sharku can compensate the differential between Rohirrim and um, Vorks, you know? Because Rohirrim have a lot of support from heroes. And of course, they have also the shields, which Vorks can't have. Of course, they have the whole ability for a short duration. But in most situations, armor is better than the damage. So you would have now armor leadership with Sharkum when he's level 3. Oh, too many pikemen. Too dangerous. Oh, not, demoli not demolishing in time. That's a uh, power point feeding action. And he's gonna get more and more power points. Going for armory next. That's pretty good. But I think there are too many pikemen. There comes the Palantir running into the pikemen, but they were not in formation. And now Sharku is on the hunt. Just like in the films. But he didn't get affected by the Palantir because he was Palantiring the, the pikemen. So there is no chance of Sharku catching up to the Rohirrim because every hero. A mounted hero is the same speed as the as the cavalry units. The only exception to this rule are Eoma and also Gandalf. They are a bit faster. Oh, be careful there with the Rohirrim. Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't lose. Oh my god. He was, it was actually quite close. And we have now Rohirrim Archer up on the field. That's pretty good. And all you need to do now is get fire upgrade on your, on your dudes. And they will clean up all the spikemen. So now Rohan is generally designed as to be the ultimate lead game faction when it comes to control the, the minimap and the whole map, you know? Because you have units which are mobile, but also counter pretty much everything. The Rohirrim Archer can counter the Vorks because they have like bonus damage scala against horses. They are giving bonus damage to heroes too. That means Sharku, Lord Saruman can't really approach them in lead game. And also, they are good against pikemen. And they can hit and run that's something super unique to the rohan faction on the on the other hand they have no pikemen just because of that reason all rohan needs is a lot of money though you need a lot of cash to get to this point of the game in which you have all this army you need because you need armory you need stable you need level two stable you need heroes you need fire arrows 
that's a lot that's a lot of time and also money consuming but once you reach that point when you have a good early game it's easy to reach obviously then you should on the people get the whole map under your control and Isengard can't really do too much about this. You can't run, you can just not send pikemen out when there are too many Rohirrim archers which will just one-shot your pikemen over and over again. Eoma and Theorin. Eoma is a good investment into the late game. It might be a bit too late for this, but when you get them to level 4, it's gonna be a huge upgrade for the Rohirrim archer army. You have also lords up on the field. Lords, of course, the anti-hero he is. But there is no Isengard army just yet. He's going for ar army though. He has two combos very soon with heavy armor and forge blades. And of course, fire upgrade. There comes the Palantir on the Vorks and Shargu. And they are on the hunt. But again, here the same situation like before. Uh, Rohirrim Archer can always turn and fight this without any problems. Two power points might be invested into the Elven Wood. Which could be a good thing for late game. Because Isengard needs the Freezing Rain against, uh, against uh, Rohan. And when you can force your opponent to pick the Tainted Land, it will not only slow down the progressing to reach the Freezing Rain, but also it will give you the option, if it does cover your land, to use it, to use the enemy land to regain your leadership bonuses at some point of time, you know? So I would always go for Alvin Wood in this matchup. Always. Good map control for Rohan, like pretty much full map control like expected. Now he's gonna get richer and richer and richer. You can always sell these Yeoman Archers to the Citadel without any problems. You don't need to keep them for your command points, but it doesn't look like that Rohan has command point problems right now. There is a Lurz who can always threaten these heroes. And if they get crippled, he's gonna cripple Theorin, which is smart. Always cripple the King. The one who gives leadership, because in this moment, at this point of time, Elma doesn't give leadership, super early heal. Land will be used, immediately covered by Aizen, which is smart, I think, when you want to take down the king. And Theoden has been taken down. Now, they have even more leadership on the land, which, you know, adds pretty much armor leadership to the war chant. But Lourdes is still only level 2, it means he still needs 3 full levels, as Sharku is trampling down the Alvin warriors over and over again to get power points. And experience points. He's low. Spear throw. Now it's on cooldown. Can he keep chasing though? 30 seconds cooldown. It still needs around about 10 seconds. If he kills him, that's a lot of experience. He's waiting for it. Yeah, he's gonna do it. Oh, boom. That's a huge kill, boys. That's a huge kill. Only a quarter needed for the... Ah, that's a huge kill, actually. Holy... I'm a big fan of this kill. He needs to use the Vorchan defensively now. He's going for the towers. Getting a lot of experience points. Eoma is running it down a little bit. Didn't even finish the tower. Don't run into this. Tower could give you a lot of power points. But he's deciding to leave. Which he should. The pikemen are still Vorchanted. You have no armor leadership from your Theory. And Theodian is dead. And one of the Rohirrim Archer finish him. And Lourdes is gonna finish him off with the bow as he's hitting level 3, which will unlock the carnage. Okay, still good map control for Rohan. He can always co recover from the losses he made. The only problem is whenever you lose stuff, you will get power points to your opponent. Now he went for the devastation. He has 5.3k. He will go for Lourdes, I mean for Saruman next. And very soon, we will hear a deep voice coming from the Middle-earth to the battle for Middle-earth. I love this animation, by the way. Watch the animation when it comes. It's so cool, you know? A new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. Do -do -do. <laughs> okay, a new power is rising. But now, Isengard is a pretty good faction when it comes to camp against Rohan. It's super difficult for Rohan to break through the camping situation. Now he has Lourdes level 3, but with Saruman being around him, Lourdes will also be able to level up faster because of the combat experience bonus, which also applies to the sharing experience. Deja vu, you know? Can we not make peace, you and I? Oh, Lourdes got full experience. Look, but that's what I was talking about. A whole level, just because Saruman was nearby with the 50% combat experience. 
But in the meantime, half of the beast has been taken down, actually. That's kind of big, bro. Holy. Holy. Outpost contract the top side. The Vestition will be used for the second time very, very soon. But again, he went for the for the War Chant Palantir. Industry, Tainted Land, and also the Vestation. That means he still needs three and a half power points for his Freezing Rain. And on top of that, you need 20 power points for your Balrog. So in the long terms, when you invest when you pick up all the power points from your spell book, you will lose the race for the ultimate summon, which would of course be the EOD for the good faction or the Badrock for the evil faction. And I don't need to tell you, you know, how OP they are. This ultimate summons. Theodine is revived for the second time. Going for the base. Be ready to ride out. Emma, I cannot believe it actually. He still needs a kill for level 4. The outpost will be given up. He knows he cannot protect us. Saruman and Lord's too strong. One more level should not be too difficult to get that, I think, you know. And he can always... The thing about okay. Rohan is, whenever you see your opponent kind of exposed like this, when he, when you see the Saruman and Lords are not in position, you can always go to his base. Because this army will be much weaker. Smart move from Aizen to kind of focus down the Rohirrim Archer. They are the main damage dealers. And he will be able to finish off the battalion. Again, the Alvin Wood kind of pointless because you know at this point of the time, your opponent has the Dainted Land. You can always, you can always cover your land. It's a great terrain in which your army is stronger. Now it's going to be easy for him, for him to defend this area because his army can just stand on the Tinted Land and camp there. And as long as they stand there, they will have also more armor, more resistances. Which means he can get away with um, his heroes being not around his piece. Um, now you might ask yourself, but what is, you know, what is Rohan supposed to do against that? It's actually a, a game of patience, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go for Legolas and play the long game, play the poke game. You step up, use Hulk Strike and then go back and do this on repeat. And what you want to do is whenever you use the Hulk Strike, you want to place your Theoden and also Elma. But in this case, Elma will be already level four. So you want to place Theoden next to your Legolas and he can share experience. You, want, you are aiming to get Legolas or Theoden, I think, to level four for a glorious charge and get power points with your Legolas by using Hulk Strike over and over again, kind of punish the camping situation from your opponent. That's like the thing you can and you need to do. Um, Legolas outranging every unit in the game, and you can, and he's also fast, so you cannot catch him unless you use Palancy on your Lourdes. But even if you do that, you need to always keep your distance. It's not going to be easy. He's too slippery, you know? Lourdes is, I mean, Legolas is kind of difficult to be caught. Ooh, fireball. So that, that's what you will do in exchange. Like, what this Saruman did with the fireball, you can do this also with your Hulk Strike with Legolas. Ooh, Elma running it down. Uh, level 4, level 3, you know, super strong. Level 4, Sharku, he's getting sandwiched. Or he's trying to sandwich his opponent, but the army is way too strong. Lords will get level 5 here potentially. He's going to cripple Theorin. Who's far away, but the Rohirrim are not shooting. The Rohirrim army is not approaching, but there comes the freezing rain. That means your leadership is meaningless. It's going to be a big L for Rohan, as the king of Rohan will be taken down for the third time. And super smart from Aizen. Do you see that? He is not kind of panic focusing Theoden because he knows Theoden is dead anyway. You don't need to focus him down when you know he's crippled, he cannot move. So kill the stuff you can kill before you can kill or before you finish off the. Uh, Theorin, you know? So get the maximum out of the situation. Most people make the mistake, they're like, okay, I cripple Theodin, I need to kill him fast, fast, fast. Dude, he's super squishy, you can kill him in a second. So when you cripple him, and your opponent tries to defend him, kill the army who is trying to defend the king, and then once they disengage from you, or when once you are done with them, you can still one-shot Theodin, you know? So he's going for the siege at the top side. Also, armory is going to be built up. I think he's going to go for the forge plates, which he never purchased at the first place. 
And Lourdes was also getting a lot of experience from this. And the heroes from Eisen are super mobile. They can always rotate. And Eisen has two armies. One of them is guarding the base. This one. And one of them is pushing, you know, to attack. And now the base also being quite durable. All the furnaces are hitting at least level 2. Some of them also level 3. All of these have like now 5,000 HP. Super, super tanky structures. Level 2 has 3,000 HP. In Trohan army, I mean, Elma still didn't get level 4. It's unbelievable, but it is what it is. I will ride once again. Okay, he's going for the beast, uh, for the for the outpost. Now, you might use the... Oh, but Saruman! Uh, Saruman is underestimating the damage from the Rohirrim Archer with its statue leadership. And he's going to go down. And actually, that's a big W there for Rohan. He's still demolishing the army. Now, Lourdes is super, super exposed. Kill him. He's going to turn and defend his Lourdes. But you don't want to let him live, though. He's level 5 now. It would be a huge revive time if you take him down. But I think he doesn't want to overcome it, which might be the smartest thing to do. But now you know his heroes are either dead or damaged. And now you want to go to the outpost and summon your ends to do this stuff. 9 power points collected for Aizen and 3 power points collected after the end summon. But you want to summon the ends right on top of the army actually here. They have no leadership, boys. They have not even war chance. He's going to summon the ends for whatever reason behind. Maybe he couldn't get the chance to summon them on top of the army. But now they are raging. The ends are going crazy. The ends are going to war just like in the films. Destroy the Ballista first. Eoma will use the Spear Throw finally. He never uses Spear Throw. And a beautiful micro here from Isengard actually. Uh, not even the Rams will be taken down. The positioning was super bad. And the Ains literally didn't achieve nothing. And I cannot believe it. But Eoma still sitting on level 3, you know. That should, not, that should be illegal, bro. Like, you are missing a quarter experience for the past five minutes into the game. All you need, go kill some workers with him. You know what I'm saying? It's so important. Like, 70% more damage leadership. You know how important this is? 12 power points. 13. The ends couldn't get any power points. Ooh, the level 8 was barely able to survive this. Barely. And the army from Rohan is kind of chilling in the base. And the siege will continue because he couldn't destroy the original two Ballista from his opponent. It's not very good. <laughs> and they will knock knock down the tower, you know? And that's the last thing you want your you want to fight, find yourself in. The spear throw once. Let's see if Rain. Now it's on cooldown. And Saruman is still dead, if I'm not mistaken. He, he's still like Loki you can defend this. Like, there is two uh, two combos. I mean, of course, they are higher level, though. Level 7 and level 5, they have double leadership with Lourdes and Vorchant. So, quality beats quantity in this game. But this army should not be underestimated. Just go for the, for the, for the Ballista. There comes the Freezing. Uh, there comes the Elven Summon. He's going to commit to the Ballista. will be able to take it down. But two parts of the wall has been already broken. And the Vorchant has been used. And um, the thing is, once Vorchant goes on cooldown... Aizen will have the Freezing Rain, and also his Saruman will be there to join the battlefield. He just joined the battlefield, and all he needs to do is join the army. Going for the Siege. But doesn't want to overcome it. More Ballista are queued up, and Aizen will approach. He knows he has Rain. He knows all the leadership from his opponent will be negated. Which also is only theory because Elma is still not level 4. I don't want to mock him a little bit more than that. But also he lost the outpost at the bottom side. And now full commitment to the castle, which is the only remaining structure or the castle. Not, there is no outpost. Saruman is just simply walking through the gate. He's going to steal him. He's he, he, trying to steal him. To me, my son. Saruman. Oof. Oh, he's going to go down. 20 power points. Versus 7. And he knows there is no victory and Rohan will be defeated. I mean... There, there were some mistakes in this game. I think Rohan had legit the chance to win this game, actually, multiple times. He had the full map control. Going for Legolas would be a good idea. Committing a bit more, trying to in invest a bit more time to get to Eoma to level 4. Would be also lots of quality of life change for the army. You can just burst down stuff faster. Because there are multiple lanes you can always use to counter the rain. And then you want to use, you want to play the long game. You don't want to give your opponent to leave the 
the chance to leave the base like that. You want to go for Aragorn for even more leadership. Aragorn killed an Elma leadership. He cannot defend the base without heroes. That's legit not possible. And then you want to play the power point fight. But he never won any fight. He was going for all out, which kind of resulted in a big loss. You cannot fight army against army with Rohirrim Archer against combos because Rohirrim Archers are very weak against fire arrows. That's a summary of the game. I think that was low-key winnable for Rohan if he played a bit more patient and a bit more smart. But anyways, GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.